probably the person who put the price on this was like, gosh, who would buy this? It's not even worth a flip. But it is worth a flip. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it's vintage. Hey, friends. It's been so long. It's been so long and I've missed you. Um, I was focusing primarily on staying alive <laughs> and the flu. And um, I realize most people don't need to stay in bed for two weeks if they have the flu. But that's how it hit me. I have other issues as well. So uh, things like flu and COVID and that kind of stuff hits me a little harder. And let me tell you, <clears throat> I have a changed opinion about flu vaccines at this point. I don't think I'll ever skip a flu vaccine again. The day that Ben got his, I was with him, flu, vac flu shot. But I didn't feel well that day. And I said, you know, I just don't think, I just don't think I can stand the thought of triggering a bunch of extra symptoms because when I get a shot, that's kind of what happens. It hits me a little harder. So <clears throat> I didn't do it that day. And then I just didn't think about it again. So I didn't have a flu shot. And I got the flu, but nobody else did. So um, it had been probably 15 or more years since I had actually had the actual mean flu. And I had forgotten <laughs> how awful <laughs> the real flu is. Not just a bad cold, but the real flu. So I won't be skipping it again. Um, I got sick on Thanksgiving Day. And then the next two weeks just got erased from my from my timeline. So because of that, I don't have a lot of Christmas decor set up. But I'll tell you, I do have uh, I did have some pretty things already in mind and within my reach that I didn't have to go to the attic to get. So I, this is this is going to be a light version of what Christmas normally is to me. And my beautiful Better Homes and Gardens dishes, the Heritage Christmas dishes, have all the farm, little, not farm, woodland animals, you know, the deer and rabbit and all that. I love those. But, <clears throat> didn't even use those this year because, well, I'll just, do, I'll do a little tour of a separate video, but I'll do a little tour of what I do have. But my son-in-law's great-grandmother passed, and there was a set of red uh, red and white transfer dishes, transfer wear, that no one else wanted or needed. So it came to me, and because it's red and white, it is in my china cabinet, and that's what I'm using for this Christmas season. And I love knowing that they belong to Ruby. So um, that's to share. But right now, <clears throat> and this will all pretty much be new to me because uh, a week before Thanksgiving, I, I did a little bit of thrifting and <clears throat> I, I thought, you know, and here's what I always do. I won't unbag it until I've done a thrift haul because <laughs> that's just how I did. I just kept it in a little, a little clump <laughs> over in the corner of my dining room and um, I'm just... Now, from a week before Thanksgiving, I'm just now looking into these treasures, and I have not gone thrifting since that day. And because uh, of being sick, and because I have an excess of items, I gave myself a, a self-imposed moratorium. I said, I'm not, I'm going to try my best not to step into a thrift store for the entire month of December. I'll see how it goes, because it's pretty hard for me to resist. Because I just, if I have time and I'm driving right past it, I'm like, but what if there's something 100 years old in there? And it's just waiting on me. <laughs> so, so I, you know, I'll see. But I'm going to try to not even go thrifting, not even once, the entire month of December. And just let it be all about organizing and going through the things that I that I already have in my home. I, I can pretty much go on a treasure hunt in my own home. And one room, my beautiful rose room, <clears throat> that is set up with beautiful Victorian Victorian furniture and all kinds of... It's, it has become, one item at a time, the dumping ground for extra decor, 
Um, I noticed that even my sons put a couple of long cardboard boxes that their rifles were purchased in. What? <laughs> Here's the, have you ever noticed if mama slips up and lets an area get cluttered, uh, then the whole family just has no regard for it anymore. Oh, this is the place where you put extra junk. So they just, everybody starts piling and it's bad. So, um, and I had said months ago, maybe I'll do a video of reorganizing the Rose Room. And it wasn't even this bad several months ago. It's even worse now. So we'll see about that because I love having that room, that extra room. Oh, I'm getting a phone call. Hold on. That was <clears throat> my little daughter Mallory because tomorrow is my day to, well, two days a week. And I, I will do two days previous week. I just did one day because my first week keeping Erin Gage, the newborn. She has a babysitter that we love. She's not just a babysitter. She's just a, a lovely, wonderful friend that we have known for many, many years. And uh, that's that's her regular place. Mallory only works two days a week. Her husband teaches school. And Mallory is a nurse at the cancer center. She does chemotherapy with, with patients. And so um, because... I'm not the strongest in the world. Um, the two days Mallory works, I'm keeping the newborn baby. And he's wonderful. <laughs> and I love him so much. <laughs> Except last week, he didn't want to take a nap the whole day. He would only stay asleep like 10 minutes at a time. That was ridiculous. But anyway, I'm going to uh, share with you this thrift haul and We'll see. I'm, I'm going to, I'll probably share a few, also <clears throat> a few little uh, inserts of some areas that I have decorated and reorganized. But <laughs> here we go. All right. First thing. Look at this tall pillow. Don't remember what I paid. Looks like it came from the downtown rescue mission. $2.99. Look. I love it so much. That side's mostly just tree. This side has some lovely ladies. That's just precious. That's good. Love it. Okay. Okay, this. Okay, these are not even from a thrift store. These were at Dollar General. Four napkins for $4. And I really liked the plaid for Christmas. I know this. So, um, I need to set these out to use, and they'll look really pretty with my stuff over in the dining room. Don't have any remembrance. Oh, $19.49. I paid $5. The Modern Dog Encyclopedia. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can... $19.49. How wonderful is that? Oh, Okay. Mostly black and white. Oh. Oh, that's American Foxhound. Well, that looks just like my dog that I call a beagle. Maybe what I've got is a foxhound. She's a rescue. Ella's a rescue, so we don't we don't know anything about her heritage. In fact, we thought she was... What's that? We thought she was like seven years old, and the vet said he thinks she's only five years old. German Shepherd Dog Club of Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama, 1960, second prize. Somebody's German Shepherd. How precious is that? Oh, I love the smell of an old book. What makes a book smell like that? I don't know, but that's wonderful. I usually, okay, let's see. Usually try to take these little stickers off as quickly as possible because they often cause a discoloration and a sticky spot. But look, I thought that was interesting that it literally has chewed edges, probably from a dog. <laughs> that looks like where a dog has chewed. Okay, so I'm going to save the little price tag because I always like looking back and seeing 
what I paid for something. So I'm going to stick that right on the inside there. Mm, and that's sweet? Okay. Something else from that same. This came from my home place in Gunnersville. $18.91. Paid $3. Differential and integral calculus. I have mathematicians in my house. Not me. I don't do math. All the brain cells that God gave me for math were hijacked and taken over with crafting. <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking with it. Okay, 1891. That is a long time ago. Ooh, look at the... In 2010, someone paid $1 for this. Maybe. But the... In 1891, look at that W.S. Graves Burritt College. Look at that beautiful signature there. That's gorgeous. Look at the penmanship. We just don't use that kind of care anymore. Ooh, this was a library book. Can't get it out because I got this up. Okay, look, I'm going to stick that on the library book. Differential calculus. Look how many people are interested in checking out a book about differential calculus. <laughs> um, the men in my family are really, are really math-brained. I have scientists. My husband is a scientist. He works, he works on a Department of Defense contracts. He's an engineer. And my sons are also going into that field, and they are in college. And I have a daughter who's a school teacher, and a daughter who is a registered nurse who works at the cancer center. And then I have a daughter who is a respiratory therapist. So we've got, we've got a broad range. Um, one of my son-in-laws teaches middle school history. One of my son-in-laws is a chef. My other son-in-law has so many good talents, awesome talents, but what, what is particular to me, well, he is the drummer for their church, but he also is in a gospel quartet. Quartet means four, but there's a few more than that. But he travels on the weekend and sings and does all kinds of things. I mean, he has a regular job uh, that he has to use for paying bills, but then he has this whole other aspect of himself, so that's wonderful. Okay, this looks like a bag. Children's books from the Downtown Rescue Mission. I don't remember this one. Why did I pick that up? Probably just to read. Come Away, My Beloved by Francis Roberts. Oh. Ooh. <gasps> it has people's notes and underlinings. I love it. I always, always read what someone else has underlined. And it had a bookmarker in there. God is love. Well, enjoy looking at that. Okay, then Miss Twiggly's tree. Look at the dog on the swing. I thought that my grandbabies would love. Ooh, <gasps> look how interesting. <laughs> I'm saying, oh, my grandchildren would love looking at this. <laughs> I'm the one. I'm the one. Well, I am so popular this evening. That was my husband. He's on the way home. Okay. My weekly reader picture word book. And I thought this looked like a really excellent book to sit down with grandchildren and look at all the things. All the things, love the things. This is wood. I paid a dollar forty-nine for a wood duck. I don't think he's especially pretty. I think he has really beautiful paintings. I I have a few wood ducks, and sometimes I group them together, and sometimes I just sprinkle them throughout, <laughs> just because. 
I don't know if I have good memories from a grandparent's house of wood ducks. I don't know, but if it's actual wood, and it is, and it's painted lovely, and it has a lovely shape, I really, I really enjoy having these as part of my world. This, this shelf behind me is, is Christmas. Oh, sorry. My favorite picture of Jesus. I, that's a work in progress because I haven't decided yet what I'm doing up there for real for Christmas. But it started, and I, I am getting to look at my favorite painting of baby Jesus. I love that particular painting of baby Jesus. It's the, the first time I ever saw it a few years ago, I gasped. And I think it's because as a, as a mother of five and, and knowing what a newborn baby looks like, <laughs> personally, intimately, that particular, that particular art captures the essence of, of the innocent baby that Jesus really was. And that, that's amazing to me. I can't decide if this is truly old or made to look old, but I kind of feel like it's truly old. It does have this modern looking thing on it so that gives me a little doubt but $9.99 and I felt it was well worth it because look at the tiny little intricate I can kind of I can kind of feel my my, my uh, thrifting I can feel it changing a little bit as time goes on because I have an abundance of little things I now am able to resist picking up every little thing that I think is cute and just kind of holding out for something that costs instead of a one dollar thing or a two dollar thing skipping skipping a few other things and going for a ten dollar thing that's really special or a twenty dollar thing that's really special you know because after a while you know you can only use so many tiny things and you begin to enjoy and appreciate a little bit of a larger thing. Uh, one of the larger things that I got recently was that churn that looks to be 100 years old. And I did pay $20 for it, um, which I thought was a, a really good price, even though it has a couple of, of complete cracks that you can see from both the inside and the outside. So it's very fragile, I'm sure, but it is still whole and it isn't. It isn't broken apart yet, and it has not been glued. You can see that there's never been any glue put in those cracks. But the way that it's chipped up, the the natural age and wear of it, I love it. I love it so much. Right now, it has a round piece of wood sitting over the hole because it's, it was just the churn itself, and I have a lamp on it. Look at that. That's beautiful. I could put... I've got a Christmas tree that I could put that in, put in that, okay? Now, I don't more remember what's in these bags than the man in the moon. I don't remember. This will be a surprise to all, all of us. Okay, Goodwill, $1.99. Burlap sack. Maybe that's an iron-on transfer. You can say. I don't know, but I love burlap sacks. Nice, very nice. And uh, I like putting things like a burlap sack. Look how pretty that is. Just kind of hanging out, hanging out of the basket. The red tag has got to go, but okay. Okay. Keep it down here so you can't see it yet. This. 99 cents, and it has, I don't know if that's fabric or scrapbook paper or what, but there was a set, each 99 cents. These came from Goodwill. You can see they're really little. They're smaller than my hand. I need to put some grandbabies pictures in these. That's so cute. I also have a grouping on my four-year wall of some ornate gold frames. Maybe I can uh, add this to that grouping. Those are super cute. And what is this? 
Oh, look, it's, it's Christmas. I totally forgot about this. I paid 99 cents. M for Marla, and it has the holly berries. That looks very rustic, doesn't it? That is stitched on, glued on. Not sure if I will keep that on there, but I do like that it says Mary and Bride. I think that's cute. Okay, what are we doing here? Ah, that's so cute. Okay. Okay, I have thought for four dollars and ninety nine cents, I couldn't buy all the pieces and do this project for less money than than this, unless I found this on the side of the road, which I do find things on the side of the road sometimes. Someone has already taken this little vintage, this is a sewing machine drawer. These tiny, narrow drawers came from old sewing machines. It already has been painted one of my very favorite colors, and the legs that have been put on are wooden spools, which I adore. I think that is so $4.99, and I could not have bought the pieces and done this project <laughs> any more perfectly suited to my taste. I love this. Um, my Ella dog is snoring. Can you hear that? <laughs> I should ask the vet about that. Uh, she just is a snoring dog. She really is. What else do I have that I don't remember? Don't remember? Oh, look. For 99 cents. <laughs> Someone took very old quilt pieces and some cotton bowls. I love it just as it is. I'll use it just like that. That one's almost coming apart. No, it's just that the fabric is a little loose. But, you know... Probably the person who put the price on this was like, gosh, who would buy this? It's not even worth a flip. But it is worth a flip. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> it's vintage quilt pieces. And it even still has a great little hanging thing on it. So, there. There we go. Forgot all about that, actually. Oh, look. Here's a grandbaby thing. I paid $2.99 for a toddler life jacket. And with with uh, four, no, with five grandbabies, soon to be six, um, this is always really good to have when we go on our summer adventures and camping and stuff. I like having those kinds of things. Safety first. What is this? Is this a garment? Is this a table runner? What is what is this? Okay, look. It's oh I love it. It's like a poncho cover kind of thing. What is this? True craft. I don't know about that brand. Look, I love the colors. Ooh, I need to wear this very soon. That's cute. Is that I will wash it first. Even though it's not a bad smell, it's just not my smell. And I don't... I've never, in the history of any thrift store that I have ever shopped, I have never brought home a bed bug or a anything. Anything like that. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Nor shall I ever. <laughs> oh, my word. What is in here? Oh, I forgot about these. Oh, I'm... I'm they're heavy as all get out. Okay. Books. Okay. I paid $4.99, $4.99, and $2.99 for these coffee table books that are absolutely things that I love. Country French florals and interiors. I realize we now have Pinterest. And, uh, you know, you don't you don't necessarily love, well, I love, but most people just prefer to look at these kinds of images on Pinterest. 
But there's something very calming and special to me about holding a heavy book in my hands and even just seeing it sitting on a coffee table or in my home somewhere on a shelf, no telling where. Um, there's something special to me about a book that has beautiful images such as that. Now, I think that my style encompasses several types of decor, uh, country French, French country being one of the things that I really love. I do not like that abstract art in the back. That's not something that speaks to my spirit. Um, but I do love the furnishings. I love the table setting. And I can't wait to see what else is in this book. I think it will be so calming and such a treat, personal treat to me, to sit and look at this book. This is the kind of thing that I do when I'm sitting. Ben wants me when he's home. Uh, in the evenings or on the weekend when he's watching a ball game or doing something sometimes he has strategy games that he plays on his he's got a tablet um, this is something I would do sitting right beside him because we like to be near one another but we don't do the same things we don't we don't enjoy the same kinds of stuff so that's lovely Charles Faudry with Tony Garner. I have no idea about any of those. Okay. This one says, oh, I forgot about, look, it's Bunny Williams. Okay. I love Bunny Williams. She is a maximalist and she has been decorating, I think she lives somewhere in New England. She has been decorating spaces that are just my type, just my favorite for a very long time. Good gracious. Again, that was my oldest son. Older, older than my other son. I have two sons, three daughters. Uh, and my sons still live at home because they're still in college and maybe they'll never move out. Maybe they'll live with me forever. Anyway, he's asking, could I please heat up some of that stuff for supper? Two nights ago, I cooked a full spread of chicken and dressing, green beans, mashed potatoes, all the extras. I did this because um, I got sick on Thanksgiving Day and I did eat at my mother's house, but then was sick later that day uh, with the flu. Didn't know it, but thank God nobody else at my mother's house, none of my beloved family, nobody else got it. Because as soon as I began to feel bad, I went to my mother's back bedroom and laid down on top of her bed because um, I thought, wow, this is a really bad time for a symptom flare to hit, which that happens to me occasionally because I have Sjogren's and I have lupus and I have fibromyalgia and other things that just sometimes if I've been very active, um, it just hits me and I just need a timeout. I just need to go rest. So that's what I did. And thank God I did that because it kept me separated from the rest of the people. I was around people very little. But enough that I could have given it to someone, but I didn't. Nobody else got sick, thank God. Bunny Williams. Anyway, I've got to go in the kitchen. I'm going to go in the kitchen and start reheating some of that for tonight's supper. <clears throat> okay, and then what is this last one? My French country home. <laughs> Another French country. That's wonderful. $4.99. For these last two books, $2.99 for the smaller book. And those came from Goodwill and Gunnersville. And I, I, that's wonderful to me. I love it. love having them stacked on um, a dining room table. I think that's just very uh, enticing, interesting. What is this? What in the world? Oh, this was the reason that I even went to that Goodwill is because I had been there. It was a, it was the beginning of the week. It was probably on one of these days that I caught the actual flu. Um, I went in Goodwill and I found a beautiful piece of fabric and asked them could they price it for me because it didn't have price on it. And they said, I'm sorry, we can't price it and put it out the same day. And I said, why in the world not? <laughs> they said, it's just our policy. We can't. So I came back the next day with no guarantee that it would be there, but I figured it probably would because 
who, what other old granny would love this fabric as much as me? <laughs> so it ended up being something like, how much was it? I can't see the thing. $3.99, and it looks like a full, it's more than a yard. But look at the ducks. Look at the birds. Look at the greenery. Look at the florals. I love it. I've never seen anything like it. Let's see what's the maker. Who made this? Margarita Cushing. Exclusively for Spectrum Designer Gallery. Oh, well, Margarita Cushing, you have just you have done a lovely job of creating a fabric that I love. This can be this is big enough to be a couple of things, and it will be. I'm going to make um, a little cover for my footstool that I love using in this in this living room. We all love that footstool because it can sit in front of the couches and you can put your feet up. Uh, but I've I've got seasonal removable covers that I can make that I can put on to that footstool, and still have enough for probably one big throw pillow that would also be made of this. If there's something bigger and better that I could use this for, I don't know what that is right now. But, you know, who knows? That's, that's, that's the whole reason I went back that second day. And I just don't understand why, if, the, if there's no price tag on it, if they somehow missed pricing it and it never had a price, or if some shopper pulled the tag off or just fell off accidentally, why, why can it not be put back out the same day? It's, do they think some shoppers are pulling tags off and asking for it to be repriced in hopes that it will come out cheaper than the first price? Because that could go both ways. What if it comes out and it's higher? See, I don't, I don't have a devious mind. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't, think of ways that I think I could cheat the store. That's not that's not who I am. So I'm perplexed. If you know why that policy has to exist because of what some shoppers must have done, then do tell. What did I pay for that? 99 cents for a spongeware. Oh, it has a name on it. I mean, a, a, a maker's a maker's brand, but obviously they have to put a price tag right over the middle of it. And guess what, y'all? If you're sick in the bed for two straight weeks and you are absolutely immobile, your fingernails grow. <laughs> I haven't. These are my fingernails. Look at that. These are a little shorter because I'm rough on my thumbnails because I'm doing things like this all the time. But, um, yeah, that's the only thing I accomplished in those two weeks in the bed with the flu is I grew out my fingernails because I wasn't washing dishes. What do y'all think that says? Never heard of it. Well... That's cute. Oh, I forgot about it. Did someone make this or just or just uh, prove that they are the owner of it? I don't know. Glazed on the inside and the out. A very beautiful cream colored picture. And this this is this is sweet. Because uh, an, a picture that I had that was twice this tall met an untimely death during the time that I was sick with the flu. And I had a great big old disagreement with all the six foot tall, four foot wide men in my family that live in this house. Because uh, over a period of about of less than a week, like five, five things of mine. Not particularly sentimental, but good things that I liked, like the picture that I had some fall florals in. 
broken to smithereens because <laughs> they say that I have them encroaching on the walkways and they are too wide to prevent the sleeve of a of a bulky jacket from catching on to the floral that was in it and <laughs> crash a thousand pieces. So several items which I was so hurt and insulted that they kept on breaking stuff. Oh, you know the, the wooden spoon? The, the it wasn't wooden, it was resin. But it looked like a large wooden spoon that I that I decoupage the little fox onto. Thousand pieces. Had to be thrown away. Knock that off. Knock that off. Uh let's see, a little stack of old transferware plates. I don't know how that little stack got set into a dining room chair seat, but that's where it was. And then someone, I'll, I'll hopefully, I'm not going to call out the particular men who did this, but they do all live here. Uh, someone pulled a seat quickly and that stack went off, broke about three really, like I say, not personally sentimental, but good things. So I started thinking about how I could... Um, I do realize it's a lot. I have a lot of stuff. And we do also have to live here. And I do also live here with people with wide shoulders. And when I say four feet wide, I'm saying when they walk and swing their arms, we've probably got a four foot wide berth of clearance that's needed for that. So I'm trying to make my decor encroach upon, encroach less upon their walkways. Because I know this is the home where they live and they need to be able to walk through it. And it's not a museum. It is not a collector's paradise. Um, which I, is how I treat it, pretty much. But um, I, I have tried to scale back a little bit. And you know, if I have things that I don't want toddlers to get into when my grandchildren come over, I take a great big thick quilt or something and I just cover it up. <laughs> Because mostly, if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. And then that way, they're not tempted to touch it and take it and drop it and do things with it. And we can all just relax. Because I can't undecorate every time they come over, nor do I want to. Um, but they are learning which things they can touch of mine. They pretty much know that if it's down on their level, on the floor, or very low... They can pretty much touch those things. And if they cannot, I'll say, that's that's Miggy's. We're not going to touch that one. That's just for looking pretty. And I'll put it either a little higher or I'll just make eye contact with that particular child and make sure they understand. The girls the girls can catch this better than the boys. My twin grandsons, um, they are too busy to make a lot of eye contact. They're not as socially developed as the girls are, which is very normal. When I was bringing up my own children, I, I had two girls first, and then I had my son. And honestly, I couldn't comprehend why Sam was disinterested in eye contact. I thought, I thought it was so strange, and I didn't understand why that he would not want to make more eye contact with me, talk with me, converse with me. But in my opinion, or in my experience, that's that that's normal for the way and it wouldn't be normal for all boys but my boys were a whole lot less interested in talking eye contact face time face to face kind of time because they were too busy uh exploring the things around them they just were too active and too busy and they didn't love that mm, that that personal time beautiful Brass candlestick, $1.99. I really love the details on that. I think that's very pretty. And I have plenty of candles, and I'll put a candle in it, and I'll use it. Okay. Last item, and everybody said, yay. Okay, look, for $2.99, look at this really cute, and what brand is this? Evergreen 2018. I don't know who makes Evergreen Enterprises, Richmond, Virginia. I can look that up. MyEvergreen.com. Okay, this is a uh, really cute <laughs> Merry Christmas. And it is stitched. It is appliqued. 
and it is plaid on the back. It has jute, and it also has a little Christmas tree between the words Merry and Christmas. This is because I have found several things like this. Um, I have not been in my attic. There's a ceramic old-timey Christmas tree that I would like to use. But at this point, we're very close to Christmas. And I didn't go whole hog and bring down all my stuff. So maybe I just won't. The stockings. The stockings that I made several years ago with the fur around the top. They're gorgeous. But... I'm kind of in the mood for a different kind of stocking, like a more of a primitive looking stocking that looks like it's made of linen. That's kind of saggy and saggy. Slimline. Maybe I'll make a new set of stockings this year. Who knows? Maybe everybody will get their stocking item in a little brown gift bag. <laughs> because that's what I do at Easter. Uh, instead of doing actual Easter baskets for everybody, I do a little gift bag for everyone. Maybe I'll do that because as much as I have loved through the years decorating for Christmas, um, I really, I never decorate for Christmas before Thanksgiving. But <clears throat> since I was sick starting Thanksgiving Day for two straight weeks, and then it was another week after that before I actually started doing any Christmas decor. We're so close now to Christmas, even though I'll leave it up through New Year's, through my birthday, January 6th. Um, that's, and someone told me, and I didn't learn it till I was 50 years old, that January 6th is the last day of the 12 days of Christmas, which I didn't know that. So that's interesting to me. I didn't, nobody had ever pointed that out to me. So I guess I'm going to go and heat up the, uh, so the reason that I cooked, I was supposed to have cooked on Friday for uh, Ben's side of the family. We were going to go, well, everybody but me did go to Ben's brother's house in Huntsville because they just built a house. And there was a lot of items that I was going to cook and bring, and I was too sick to do so. So um, I still had that in my mind. You know, I did buy fresh ingredients because it had been so long. But, uh, I mean, like the chicken and all that had to be fresh. But uh, I cooked a big Thanksgiving spread, and uh, not before last was my son-in-law Will's birthday. So he came over, and they got to eat a very holiday meal with us, and it happened to be Will's birthday as well. So now I'm going to go reheat those things, and that's what we'll have for supper. And I'm glad to be back among the land of the living and the YouTube world, and Thank you for everyone who made sweet, sweet comments. Uh, uh, ben took that pitiful picture of me at the doctor's office. I was so sick, I brought my pillow, one of the pillows from my bed, and I laid down on the exam table because I was too sick to be sitting up, and I knew I was, and I needed my pillow. <laughs> so there I was, and he took a picture of me, and uh, uh, that was a bad day. Well, that's a good day because I got a couple shots. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking. I love all of you, and thank you for watching. Thank you to everyone who has clicked subscribe, and to all of you who have been watching my old videos during this dry spell because of my sickness, thank you for that because those viewing hours do help the whole formula for YouTube, and it helps, helps my videos still be... Um, suggested to other people and that kind of thing. So thank you for all that. I love you. I pray that God blesses all of you. And uh, hopefully in a few more days, I'll do, um, I've got two or three projects I want to do. And also uh, I'll do, I'll at some point, I'll do some kind of a Christmas tour. Love you so much.